please welcome Kun Chakrit. Hello, Kun Chakrit. How are you? I cannot hear you yet. Can you just okay. uh, turn on speaker? Now. Okay. I'm not quite sure Great. whether anyone can hear me or not. Okay. Thank you very much for giving me uh, to have a chance for presentation on the topic calling the study of business benefits from the improving commercialization of gemstone scrap. Actually, the project, um, I have the financial support from Thai Research Fund in the last two years. And then we have uh, conduct a survey on how to, how to utilize, how to make use of the scrap or the waste in order to generate more profits under the theme of circular economy. And our team is comprising three people, okay? Apart from myself, uh, we have Dr. Somchanok Pasakondalat, also from Chulalongkorn University. And then we are very honored to have Dr. Ponsowa, who was the uh, uh, ex-director of the GIT as well, to cooperate on, on this project. Yes. The introduction, the objective of the project is to promote and recycle and add it value of the scrap or the waste or the unused thing to generate more profit. Because it seems that in Thailand, we have a number of gemstone, a rough stone, and a number of scraps that losing from various process during cutting lapidary. And then we can make use of this in order to um, um, how does it create more value, especially for the people in the countryside who do the cutting of gemstone. And the objective is to quantity, is to quantify of the value generated from 10 species of gemstone type, including precious stone or its hard, hard ones, and also the semi precious stone. And then combining with this, we have 10 types of gemstone, ranging from ruby, blue sapphire, yellow sapphire, green sapphire, and also some soft precious stone, semi precious stone, including emerald, garnet, bergen, black spinel, non-black spinel, and um, peridot. dough. And afterwards, we have to assess this as opportunity and transforming the gemstone scrap into value-added products. The value-added products comprising decorative items like a rings, a necklace, something, and also non-decorative value-added, for example, cosmetic products. And then identify the opportunity to, to sell in domestic market and overseas. And the last one is to recommend strategy for individual stakeholders to improve commercialization of gemstone scrap and increasing capacity of relevant persons involved, especially lab diary. And these are the broad conceptual framework. Definitely, we start from understand um, how many of precious stone being lost in production process and also semi precious stone. And secondly, we have to quantify the value added and then try to recognize the business opportunity to transform and to generate the profit from scrap one, from the West one, and recommendation um, of stakeholders. And uh, we have done a number of surveys. This is a few survey. This is a few survey. Actually, we have a documentary survey as well, but very limited information written about uh, how to make use of the gemstone scrap. And then in final, we have to do a few survey to every part of Thailand, especially in Bangkok, in the eastern region, we have been to Chantaburi, okay, in the central areas, including Gardenaburi, which is another gemstone spot. And then we've been to northeastern region, especially in the, in the lower northern region, like Konken, Mahasalakam, Roy Ed, something. But we're surprised because most of the lapidaries uh, they have been working in Chantaburi and then they go back to their private life. Yes. And then we've been to up north in Payao. Okay, so we have a number of cluster of lapidary in, in Payao. And afterwards, we conduct a deep interview with more than um, 150 experts participating in lapidary process, ranging from various steps in production process, coming from heating, cutting, shaping, crack moving, or polishing, and then recognize, and then try to analyze how much, how many percent of loss happened in individual process. And afterwards, um, after doing the individual survey, then we come back um, in the central area and then do workshop and brainstorm in order to realize what will be the opportunity, 
what will be the market of this uh, transformation. And these are very, very informative um, um, thoughts. We do the conduct the survey. Uh, actually, this is done by the interview and done by the observation from individual stones. The first stone that we investigate, this is a ruby case. Suppose we have 100% of the width, 100% of ruby quantity. We observe that uh, about 34% uh, being lost, 34% being lost during the production process. And the process that has been lost the most, this is crack removing, which is lost 10%. Yes. And secondly, it's come by the color setting. So in general, in general, Ruby has lost about 34%. Okay. And I will tell you later, how do we use 34% and then generate more profit? Secondly, we come to the blue supply. Okay. The blue supply, very surprising, lost about almost 40% lost about more than 40%. And the step that lost the most is in chipping, 14%, and secondly is polishing. Yellow supply, always lost the most, is about 39% has been lost during production process. And the percent that has been lost the most is chipping, especially 20%, and then running by polishing. Number four is the green supply. Green supply very supply lost uh, 42%, 42% is quite huge, okay? And the process that lost the most is chipping, and then um, subsequently the running by heating. And now we go back to semi preacher stone. The semi preacher stone, we start from um, Emerald. Um, Emerald lost um, 30, 35% during the production process, and the process that lost the most is heating and then running by chipping. Next, we go to garnet. Okay, the garnet uh, look like a ruby. Okay, it's, uh, it's come with the red uh, sign. And the garnet lost um, 43%, lost 43%. Okay, and the process that lost the most is chipping and then running by heating. Next is circon. Circon is like a blue and green color. Yes, lost 38%. And the process that lost the most is heating, and then chipping. And then we go to the black spinel. Uh, in Kanchanaburi, we have a good source of black spinel. Okay. And because of the lapidary in, in the Kanchanaburi, very keen to, to, to process the black spinel. That's enabled um, gemstone lot only 18%. Okay. That is lost uh, less than other kind of bridge stone. Okay. And the process that lost the most is crack removing and chipping. Next is non-black spinel, okay? It's also a kind of spinel, but it's called non-black. Lost 40%, lost 40%. And process that lost the most is heating, chipping, polishing. And then the last one, the last uh, the last creature stone that we investigate, this is peridot, okay? Lost 40% and chipping, polishing, and heating always the process that has been lost. This has come from the survey and observation of 150 people directly uh, engaged in, in production process. Next step, after recognize that we have a lot of loss happening during the production process, we can say that how, how the scrap has been utilized. Very surprised, um, more than 80%, 82.5% of the rest percent keep scrap by themselves without using them for commercial purpose. It's meaning that we have a lot of loss of opportunity and almost 20%, let's say 17%, 0.5, sold them to the dealer to make further steps. Okay. And then we try to um, quantify the value of loss. And then it's come back of these figures. In Thailand, in Thailand in general, in general, um, the rough uh, value of, of unseen value of the scrap that has been lost in opportunity for further improvement is about more than 2,000 million baht per year. This is the surveys done in 2018, okay, in summary. Ruby lost the most, and then it's run by, uh, and then it's run by blue supply, and then other, but in general, we lose opportunity to further uh, value added more than 2,000 million per year. And what we do 
guess what we do? We're going to do the survey and how we make use of them. And then it's summarized like this. The product cluster one, we can use the scrap to do decorative uh, product items. And product cluster two, we can use the scrap to do non-decorative product and then the market supply in Thailand. And the potential product of using non-decorative product to supply in our domestic market, including something for the women, uh, like a, a skincare, a face mask, anti-aging cream, and lip balm. Okay. And number three and number four, this is the product cluster for non-decorative item for exporting to overseas market. We see a brilliant opportunity for doing something like a lamp, eyeglass frame, hairwear, uh, nail gemstone, and the ma major market have a good opportunity for export, including European countries, North American country, Middle East, and somewhere in East Asia, in particular China. And product cluster number four, okay, is also seeing the opportunity for non-decorative product, and then to export to overseas market again. And non-decorative product having the brilliant opportunities is always the cosmetic one. And for some market, uh, we can export something to do like a gem healing therapist for the people who believe in, in, the, in holy things. Then it's come down to the recommendation. Okay? And then we do a workshop, we do a brainstorming session and it's, it's end up with the four uh, strategic points. The strategic, uh, the strategic, strategic issue number one is to develop raw material and production management by promoting procurement of gems drawn, um, by lining up, linking with um, cheap uh, scrap owner and the customer. Because the scrap owners don't see opportunity, but the customers sometimes they see opportunity. And how, how should we match um, matching them? And then we have to invent production technology for better commercialization of gems drawn, especially to eliminate some toxic um, issues. And to support transformation of the gemstone into new product based on skill and uniqueness. One of the weakness with, that we see, the lapidary always looking at up lapidary thing. And we have no one to help them to, to get the breakthrough. Strategy number two is to improve market marketing capabilities by building up market capabilities, improving market, marketing skill, develop partnership between buyer and seller. And the third one is to build confidence and positive attitude for using product made from gemstone, especially for a cosmetic product, which someone believe that they contain some toxic things. We have to purify them, fighting technology. And then we have to develop a um, reference price database. This is to elevate the price. This is to help the people who keep a gemstone scrap to know that we this market still having uh, opportunity. And number three is to elevate human resource skill by making the incubation, training rapidly gemstone scrap keeper and business entrepreneurs. And number four is to develop business environments and research developments by constructing standards of certifying products making from gemstone, eliminate the toxic of gemstone scrap especially aluminum, alumina something in producing beauty and cosmetic products. Because from the survey, it seemed that uh, non-decorative products like the cosmetic still having a brilliant opportunity to grow. And the last one is to support developing and research in identifying component of gemstone scrap. Okay, so that work has been done by three of us. Okay, from three researchers from Jula Langon and also ex-director of the DIT. Okay. So that's really the end of, of, of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much to Dr. Chakri. Thank you. All right, and moving on to the next topic, a gemological reviews of bruise of fires from Mogok, Myanmar by Kunwat Surat Sunton Tantikun.